I have a PowerPoint up to Okay. Um, some of the things I'm going to talk to you a little bit about are uh, possible board protocols, um, training and development opportunities, and evaluation for our board, and then um, the superintendent evaluation. The operating protocols, and all of this is also in your file, and we'll, we'll have report, refer to If you look at the, um, the next thing in your thing, it says XYZ Public School Board. Uh, <coughs> um, you'll see, this is actually came about, you had a retreat in June of 2012. And um, you started working on these protocols and, uh, and um, it's recommended from NISBA that a board has uh, protocols. Um, just to uh, remind us of, 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 it really helps to enhance teamwork and effective meetings. Um, so if you go through, and so what I'd like to do is kind of go through some topics, give you time to look at and think about this, and then uh, when we talk about possible retreat, coming back to this and really thinking is this something that, uh, that we want to adopt because it is adoption process to this. Um, Chris, before you can, can I? I'm sorry, to ask you a question. So, um, would it, even though Karen has not been sworn in yet, um, I think it would probably be good for us and for her if she were included on this, so that she can be looking at them too. Um, and I, I took the. Well, I went ahead and I changed some things around. The students' interest come first was listed uh, last. <laughs> there are some wording that was seemed like more negative, and I changed it to be a more positive wording. There's some things that we don't you know, like even number two. So it's a student's interest come first. So that's really our focus, and that's what we have to always go back to when making decisions and how, how does it affect the decision we make affects students. Um, I'm just trying to find a way to, to put a positive spin on don't spring surprises on the board members or the superintendent. This is just for us to remember uh, if there's something um, that, that is just coming off the table, maybe it can wait and then we can talk about it. But not to spring surprises. And I'm going to quickly go through this. I really want you to spend time looking at it, reading it, and then have time to, to talk about it. In the um, documents that the board has, it's more uh, explanation of what each of these means. And the, the big thing with um, don't spring surprises is that we don't want to make anybody look silly or bad. We want to respect each other and um, we want to show, show that and, and support that. Uh, the communication between staff and the board is encouraged. However, board requests for information will likely re um, require considerable time and may have political implications. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, may have political implications are being directed to the superintendent. So it's, if there's complaints to the board, which will happen because they're, you know, we're a small community, people use the resources, it's just, just to make sure that that information gets somewhere, that it doesn't sit in your hands, that it's brought to the attention of the uh, leadership team or the superintendent so we can um, act on it quickly. Uh, following the chain of command, that the board is actually the last stop, not the first, one of the recommendations is if a, um, a member, community member, or somebody comes to you with a concern that you um, ask, and this is my role too as a superintendent, I always say, have you talked to the teacher? Have you talked to the principal? Why don't you try that and then come talk, you know, and then you're available as the last resort rather than the first. Own your own issue. The board will not be a ball carrier for others, but rather encourage others to present their own issues, problems, or proposals in a constructive manner. I found that to be true, like where a lot of these are my concerns, and then it's coming up um, with board members when really it needs to be the um, stakeholder that is having the concern needs to be part of the solution because they usually are uh, able to have, they ha usually have a solution. And if you're, they're not talking with you, with the leadership team or the superintendent, um, they're not pro part of the problem solving. To practice the governor, governance role, which is your biggest role, the board would emphasize planning, policy making, and public relations rather than becoming involved in the management of schools. Annually conduct a self-assessment uh, and evaluation. And this is, a, I'll share a sample one, and we can talk about that for a possible retreat. All of these have come as recommendations from NISBA, by the way. 
Clearly state your goals. Utilize CEO input. That as a board, we're acting as a body and not as a board president or as a board member, but as we're working as a collective. Always remember that we're debating issues and not each other. That we can agree and uh, uh, disagree, um, but that it's not against one another, but rather the issue. David, this is part yeah. correct, yeah. <laughs> Avoid marathon and board meetings. I think we can all agree on that one. <coughs> uh, practice efficient decision making. Speak to agenda issues. And to always remember that executive sessions will be appropriate, appropriate meaning it will be uh, based on things that are supposed to be talked about in an executive and not an open session. So, I mean, they're pretty basic, they're pretty clear cut, but I do want you to take time to review them, wording of them, and then I do would like us to consider um, adopting protocols for us and that we refer to and, and speak to and, and hold each other accountable to. I think it just um, is a good reminder. We have similar, uh, we went through a similar process with um, building leadership teams and having protocols and agenda um, topics for every single um, group that meets. They have set up ground rules, so to speak, for their meet meetings at grade level meetings, at faculty meetings, and um, things like that, which are very similar. And again, it, the purpose is not so we have rules that we need to follow, but the purpose is to make our meetings be more effect be effective, efficient, and to um, encourage teamwork and collaboration. And so that's that's the point of having having the protocols. It's not to say things are bad, so we need rules. It's to say things are good, and this will help us remember to keep things going well. So uh, something for you to think, to think about. So are we, are we going to do a, a retreat in the early fall? Is that the plan? I'll, we'll, I'll get to that. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Sorry. There's another sheet in here that just, just goes along with um, operating protocols. This was uh, part of the, that June 2012 retreat that you had. And it's, um, it's just about accountability for the superintendent and, and the uh, board and how to work together to make sure that we are all being acting responsibly and using um, good practices in our decision making. So those uh, board self-evaluation, and here's there's one in here, sample board self-evaluation that um, we could use that comes from NISBA. Well, it's a little I'm using a, a lot of my, uh, getting a lot of my information. We did sign up as um, working with them. I would like to show you a NISBA mail bag, and I'm showing you this one because it talks to a little bit about um, what we Too loud. what we are sharing. It might be, I'm not sure, but um, I, this is a great resource for you. If you have a question, you can just go do a search with the word and it will come up with different two minute little um, information, inf info bits for you. So I'll share this one, we'll see how loud it is. Uh, Glenn helped figure out how, to, how we can do some sound. <laughs> I'm Jamie McPherson with NISBA's Leadership Development Department, here to answer today's mailbag question. How can a school board self-assessment improve a board's performance? Best practices and governance recommend school boards actively engage in regular self-evaluations, as it can be a valuable tool to help members reflect upon their operations, open lines of communication, hold themselves accountable, and work towards building the best possible leadership for their district and community. NISPA recommends performing a self-evaluation on an annual basis with an instrument formulated to measure a school board's performance in governance, oversight, and conducting business. It's also suggested a school board meet periodically to briefly discuss progress towards their objectives and or assess how effectively their meetings are being carried out. After the annual self-evaluation has been administered, members should come together in a retreat setting to discuss the results of the assessment. Depending on the evaluation results, 
a school board may decide to have the retreat conducted by a trained facilitator. NISBA provides this service to its members for a fee. The focus of the retreat should be positive and allow members to identify areas of weaknesses and ways to improve operations. In addition, it should allow individuals to voice any concerns, reaffirm roles and responsibilities, and establish board goals. Ultimately, the purpose of the self-evaluation is to identify areas that need improvement and work towards enhancing the board's overall performance. The benefits of performing an annual self-evaluation can be far-reaching. It can strengthen a board's leadership role, improve operations and procedures, and hold a board accountable to themselves and the community that they serve. A webinar on today's mailbag topic will be offered on NISBA's website. To check availability or to see all of NISBA's archive webinars, log on to www.nisba.org and click on webinar under training events. Thanks for watching and remember to send your questions to mailbag at nisba.org. So that's a great resource. If you have questions about any of your policy uh, updates, it's a, they have hundreds of these two-minute uh, presentations. So, um, so if we want to think about, do we want to have a summer retreat? Do we want to schedule that? Uh, when do we want to do it? Um, this is something for us to plan uh, and what type of topic we'd have for a discussion. Uh, we'll show you, if you go to the NISBA um, website, they do have a number of, these are all webinars that they have, and it's for under each category here, you go to each section. We have, I think, five or six different um, webinars now that we, and that we can, I can share them with you, and um, links that we own. I called today to see how long, how long we have that link, and they said it's active until there is a new law that changes it, that it's Oh, good. Nice. Buy the new. That's nice. Good. So, um, so that's what we did find out. So I guess it, to answer your question, I think we should at least have one to set goals, right? Mm -hmm. And they're hard to do in a board meeting okay. setting. Whether we want to try to do more than one, that's something we could talk about. We did two last year. The two last year, we then we. Refined, we refined the, uh, the goals, the goals yeah. right? So you have a new set of goals. We did one before the new board members and then one after, so I appreciate Karen being included. Absolutely. These are the possible, the, the high uh, topics that the NISMA does do that they say a lot of boards are requesting. And um, always, you know, we have to reevaluate and look at our goals. One of the things that we might want to look at is the, and I'm going to get to it, the superintendent performance evaluation process along with the board self-evaluation process as a combined because it would, uh, for me, that just kind of guides us on the year of how we want to, the focus is our, our year. And um, I like that idea a lot, I, yeah. Structures and what we're looking for. And, you know, that's open conversation of just uh, really how we can support each other and be clear. Have a clear uh, objective for the year. I mean, either way, I definitely want to try to discuss the performance evaluation for the superintendent. I mean, I don't think the previous one was a very good tool. It was very clear. So I would like to have either meeting, meeting or a, um, a retreat to discuss what to use or how to do it. I think that would be helpful. I, is there is there a reason why we the board can't set the goals publicly though? I mean. Uh, is it because it takes so long that in a board meeting it, it's just prohibitive? Or the or why is it that the board can't do that publicly? The retreats are public. So okay. But Chris, are, is, it, is there a difference between board goals and district goals? District goals we would definitely want to Absolutely. present publicly. But if it's just about the board and what we're, how we conduct business, this is my understanding, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, then while they're open, they're not really it's more of a workshop kind of thing for like board member self-improvement. I, I don't know, does anybody have a different idea we, of that? We also found that um, setting, 
having these type of discussions during a regular board meeting, we didn't really get much done. But if we set aside a retreat where we had someone come facilitate or sometimes we had the lawyer come in and help us, we actually had some things done and it was a very productive situation versus during the, um, the meeting time where we didn't get much done. Yeah, I think you spent two or three hours. But are you asking about having the openness, not a different meeting? Is that what you're asking, Walter? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, all the board members are elected. I, I, I just don't see why the board, why it just can't be open. I, I guess I'm trying to understand what's the need of it needing to happen, I don't want to say privately, but, you know. I don't think it is private, it's technically. Private. It's just a different time, typically. Dedicated, dedicated time. Okay. <clears throat> Rather than trying to squeeze it into an agenda, I think in the past it usually got put to about last. Mm. Everyone's yawning at nine o'clock. So it's prohibitive. It's prohibitive to the time. More or less. Okay. I think. And we had somebody yeah. facilitate, which was a huge help. Yeah, absolutely. We learned some things and it facilitated the mutual. But you don't ban people from the building or the floor because they might overhear something. That would be kind of silly. Yeah. Yeah. People are welcome. You know, and then you can. You, we we're kind of looking at different things today because I was asking about uh, these are the questions I was asking to Debbie today because I'm you know kind of going through this process too, and um, you can have it off campus if you choose to. It is retreat. You do try to have you know some time to be working together. You can have it on campus. I believe we ha we've held them in the teacher center. We've mm -hmm. held them here. Um, you did both seas a few times, uh, so uh, these are decisions that we'll have to make at wherever we want to. Um, if we want to do it on campus or off. Probably the most important thing is get it on the calendar. Get it on the calendar. Them. That's why. Those guys have a. a and they'll get pretty busy this. Yeah. recommended New York State School Board meet John Carroll. I know his schedule was. Uh, Tight. Busy over the summer because of vacations. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to retreat over the summer. summer. Yeah. So if I uh, so it would be a date. It would be coming up with a date that would work for work for everybody. Can we send out a meeting schedule and to see what we can come up with? I'll have Debbie can do that. And yeah, and just don't you know don't forget to include Karen on that. I'll make so sure that she, yeah. she gets everything. Yeah. Um. This is suggested. I know um, uh, my husband started working on the finance committee at the church, and they use this thing called um, doodle.com, which helps schedule meetings. And so basically, he had a website, and it was pretty simple. I don't know how he logged on, but. It's called doodle Bib, I think. Doodle, uh, right doodle I have it right now. It doodle, yeah. but, but was it easy? And That's I thought right. it was pretty it's good. It's so easy. Like the, other, the meeting one, I struggle with that. You know, this one's really easy. We meeting. were able to put it up next to our calendar, and. Everybody goes in and logs in and puts whatever dates. I mean, every day. Could you dates it's Doodle. You could probably send her the link. I can send it to you. It says double doodle.com as Doodle Easy Scheduling is okay. what it says. But if you can't you find out, can send it to Debbie there. and I. Yeah. We can certainly so it, that. I think it would be worth trying because that's always a struggle is trying to find how the millions of different dates that we can all meet. And I guess do we want a facilitator? And if so, would John Carroll be okay again? I thought he did a nice job for the goals. I thought he did a nice job. Yeah, he there. did. Mm -hmm. If it would be okay, I'll, I'll give him a call. That'd be call great. I want to find out his dates because I know his schedule sometimes. It's kind of busy and you can see where, where things overlap. Okay. But what you might want to do on this doodle is just list when he's available. Yeah. And each of us get on and, and check off. So we'll work on that? And then we yeah, look to I'll see who all has mutual dates. Yeah, so we'll okay. That's a good idea. Okay. Okay. His, find out what his calendar is and we can finalize the details. Now, for the... Self-evaluation, do you think it's better to do that with the current board and then review with the new board or wait? Because the new board members aren't going to have too much history to do the It won't. I don't know if we want to even do the evaluation or learn how to do it and to go through the steps of, well, you know, what our roles are, what it, what's important, and they can be part of that process. So come next May, we're, we're doing it. But how about this for an idea? Didn't we do something in January so maybe we could learn about it and then maybe do it halfway through the year to see? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a possibility too. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd recommend getting it off of, because it seems like we have this discussion every year about it, it, we, it overlaps with the change in the board and it's yeah. not clear if it's the old benefiting the right. new. So it may make sense to pull it ahead three, at least three months yeah. so that you can get the active members kind of say here's how we did in the past year and take those lessons learned forward mm -hmm. for the next year so so if we focus the first 
retreat on the valuations, we still got to get the goals yeah. together, right? So should we think about scheduling two retreats, one maybe in July and one August or September or something? Because it seems like every year it's like January and we're debating what our goals are for the year. But well, we just January. refined the goals in October, November. So we could just, as a board, review them publicly, the goals, see if there's anything we want to change. And I mean, that was just a few months ago. So well, um, I don't know if we need to do that again. Now that, now that I'm leaving, uh, it, <laughs> it seems that it, it's, it's logical to me anyway that um, you could have a discussion about the uh, self-evaluation. Okay, find out how the board interacts with each other and, you know, and makes decisions. And that's, I think that's important. But in order to come up with a instrument to evaluate the superintendent, you really need to have a set of goals set by the board yeah. so that yep. the superintendent can put together his or her response to that in a p action plan for the year, mm -hmm. yeah. which then gets turned into a, a physical action. You have a plan, then there's an output, and then the board is able to evaluate the superintendent on how well he or she did meeting the action plan for the year that's based upon the goals that you have brought together. Uh, and then your evaluation is in context, okay? So it's not like an ad hoc evaluation. Oh, well, we think she did this right. We think we did that right. It's, uh, it's an evaluation based upon here's what she said she was going to do. Here's what she did. And here's how much of what right. she said what she was going to do she accomplished over these five dimensions. And this is how we rate her. So I think you want to do the self-evaluation to find out how you interact. It says a lot of that is about interaction. But you want to get your, you want to take last year's goals that we spent a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. You want to look at those very early and say in August meeting, you want to come to grips with that. And as superintendent, I would bring issues that you foresee that are pending for the coming year and get those incorporated into the board goals for the district. And then you should be putting together an action plan uh, and you know before school starts mm -hmm. and then that's the plan that you get evaluated on and well, you know it would not be out of the ordinary in these circumstances for you as at this time of the year to give a written summary of how you did meeting that action plan that you put together in August that then the board used as an evaluation. Well, this has got to be something we all. I, Glenn, I'm wondering if um, maybe you could ask John for some advice given our timeline and that we have. Right. Also, I'm curious about, and this is a, a process question, when do we owe you an evaluation? I know that um, the superintendent often gives notice to the board by February that a time is coming regarding evaluation. Right. So I. It's an, an interesting year because I was in interim right. for most of that year, and you typically don't do evaluation. So, um, so maybe we'll have a little bit of a change in that schedule. So maybe we could say by the end of summer we'll work on that and we'll go okay. over this, and then the following year we'll have a more okay. appropriate schedule. But we'll be flexible this year. And I'll go over. There's an evaluation tool in here that's different than the one that um, we've used in the past. That, uh, but is that tool part of your contract? Don't we both have to agree on it? The tool, it is. Okay. Yep. It has to be, and that's where it is now. We don't have an evaluation tool. My okay. contract started, oh, I think, it just a couple days ago. Month. Right? Month. Yeah. There's no tool in the contract that we have to agree on. <coughs> we have to agree right. on a tool. Agree. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. I have a, a certain time period. Have but I think it's, it's 30 days. It's hard to agree on the tool until you know what you're going to do. Right. Well, we have our goals now. We, it, we do have board goals right now that we agreed on in November. Right. So we're, that's what we're working with. It's not like we're not working, you know, with those goals. So we have them. So <coughs> the, I'm sorry. Are those board goals the ones that are on the website or no? Okay. So the ones that say 2011 to 2013? The, yes. Okay. So no, I'm confused. And what is the difference between board goals and district goals? 
So we. So are you talking about the, like the strategic planning goals that we had? Those. I think that is a dis the the, goal those are district area. goals. The so we have our goals, goals <laughs> and then we have. Um, Do we want to have shorter board meetings? That would be a board goal. That's a goal. Yeah. For more district goal. Manage your time better. So those goals would more not necessarily be connected to all of my goals that right. you are giving to okay. me. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. So there's a little confusion there as far as board goals and superintendent goals. I will have different goals. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then any of that kind of discussion, I think, needs. I'd love for that to happen at a retreat together, where we can really be open and really make them concrete. What are my goals for? You don't need a tool at that point, right? Because you're just really focusing on what my goals are. Um, and they're out. Some of them are outlined in the contract, but you have. But the the conversation would be there about my, my goals. I, I guess I, I, I'm adding to the confusion, but I really need clarity because I think it's an important point for all of us. If we're talking about district goals, that's district business, and it must be open, so it should not occur off campus. Absolutely. It needs to occur in public session just like District this. goals, right. Okay. Absolutely. would occur here. All right. Yeah. There's okay. different. So the, we have the strategic plan and all the goals embedded. I think there was 42 goals embedded in, within that plan. And uh, there's building, there's district, there's community, and then you have board goals, and then there's specific goals that are for me. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we have to really have some, I think, facilitation about uh, understanding what the difference is and what they are, what we want them to be, and how to make them weave with each other. So th this started with a discussion about retreats, mm -hmm. board self-evaluation, which we have determined we will do in a retreat. We will in July, time. in July. And then another retreat that refers to goals and objectives, which we of which we already have. Today's recommendation was maybe in August we have a second meeting or retreat or, and reconfirm, adjust our board goals. And go over what's been accomplished, what hasn't been accomplished, what's left still you to do. It gives, it gives Chris then a month before everything you know, starts. I would to really put together like her action John's plan for the year. And give it to I you. agree with that, yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Uh -huh. well, yeah. well, John, I come by up and you can speak about evaluation, but also kind of lay out the timeline for goals and how they relate to the community. Yeah. He, was, he was pretty good. He was great, yeah. yeah. And I just want to say that if, if you're going to do your superintendent evaluation, I think. June is not a good time because that's right. just following budget season, and the last thing in the world you want to be doing is is evaluation. doing your evaluation. Yeah, but I think that's just in the wake. Is that not con contractual when it happens? <coughs> I'm not sure if it's is specific. Do you know if it's specific to the contract and when it happens? I think just that it happens. I thought it stated February in your contract. Yeah, okay. by a certain date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it changed. I thought it said so you had to agree by something by February, but it changed the. So my contract started in May, so you really have until you have some time if you want to do it that way, according to contract. It was not in my interim contract. That was a half a page. So uh, it's, we could talk about how we well, want to we do Well, we might that. want to ask Ben and your yeah. person and yeah. what we should be doing. Okay. So there are professional development opportunities. And so there's a new, um, one of the things that Glenn was referring to is getting the uh, new board members together prior to, to kind of go over some things. And there's a new member orientation to maximize board performance. <coughs> it's actually tomorrow, but I could, we could purchase that and, and uh, we could do that with the new board members. Um, that would be a separate time just to talk, to go over. Uh, an orientation, basically. And that webinar is actually being done by um, the superintendent of Gilderland and three of the Gilderland board members have been um, well received as having an effective board. Yeah. So I uh, really am interested in, in hearing that. And per so that would be a purchase that we would do. It's like $75 and then we would have it for um, that one wouldn't change anyway. Right. So that would be nice to have. There are, ch as you become a new board member, and I will also, I'll be sure to share all this with Karen. I actually thought she was going to be joining us tonight. I was hoping to, um, so to share this. But there are um, mandatory trainings that you have to have. Which we wait till you get on the board before we tell you this. So, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so um, they do have it online if you want to do it online, but it's over a longer period of time, or you can go to 
um, the actual uh, dates. And they are, um, oh, here's the dates right here. It's, uh, there's four different time periods that you have to do it. I think you have one year to complete the training. Yeah, I remember mean, when I took the board governance, I thought that was really pretty well done. And what happens there? Yeah. The, man, the, the financial one was a little drier. But sometimes Nisville will offer them, sometimes our Central New York district yeah. will offer them something might be closer in Auburn versus going to Syracuse or yeah, something. They had like uh, retired superintendents, they had long-time school board members, they had a variety of people that created insights. And I did the financial one online last year as well. So. But you know what, the good thing about going to them, I know convenience and money-wise it might be good, but you, you meet other people from, like yeah. I met people from Dryden and Ithaca and Groton, and it's really good to meet other people in districts nearby. And, mm -hmm. and um, you would list, let Debbie know and she'll schedule you and get you all set up for whatever one you'd like to do. And um, maybe um, we can coordinate with our other new board members, see if we can go together. Um, so Actually, that's Ron Finch did the, the fiscal one, so that was really good. Oh, what, did yeah. he? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's that for you. The are um, the NISBA. I want to, that should be 94th, 94th <laughs> uh, annual convention and expo. That's October 24th and 26th, and um, that's always a really wonderful uh, re uh, professional development. And I went last year. And um, it, I really, it was great for me to go. And I would encourage as many of you to go. And if we could all go together, that, that would be, would be awesome. really ideal. Yeah. And um, often, one of whatever company we're working with, Tetra Tech or um, uh, our law firm, they will always do an evening a dinner for us. And it's really a nice dinner. And it was actually a time where I got to meet our attorneys and spend time with them. So it was really nice mm -hmm. that I went. So if you would like to go to that, if we could if we want to organize even if it's for one evening and you could st you could stay or, or stay overnight or you could um and get both days in maybe we could coordinate what day that would be awesome i will find out from ben's firm when they're having what day they're going to have the um dinner and you can bring your families to this i mean it's a nice it's a nice event it's so nice and it's nice that it's in rochester because it's so close it is so if we could go together that would be great and um debbie will schedule that um, it'd be a different type of retreat for us in a way. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, I went on their website as soon as I got the mailing. I think it's not going to be posted to June 1st because I was wondering. I know I can't right. get away because I teach on Fridays, but I could do a Thursday. So okay. if you could sign up for a day, and I was just waiting to see once it got posted. Yeah, yeah June. For Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll find out when the dinner is, and I'll but find out what day, yeah. what so type of events are happening. and okay, uh, So that's something for you to think about. Okay, so the evaluation that I have here, this is, this, it's a packet um, in the back. <coughs> this is the, from the council. I've asked a number of superintendents what they use. Uh, this is um, the a model Board of Education evaluation of the superintendent. Um, this is one of the ones that NISBA comes and talks to you about and ref when, if, they, if they did the uh, evaluation. And you'll see as you go through, um, it's similar to what David said that like all the goals are you have to input the goals and that's what what I need to what we need to know and have worked out together what my goals are <coughs> what, what the expectations are and um, so this is something for you to look at I know you had a different one uh, in the past and so this is for each one of you where well, this would be your document for to complete the evaluation so it wouldn't be um, like I think everybody did the same form the last I'm not, I'm not really sure what it was <laughs> but um, so this is something for us to uh, consider so you could take the time to go through but I, I it seems to be quite comprehensive and also to be um, able to be tailored one of the things one of the reasons that we would need a that I would recommend that we would have a um, some information on a retreat on is the and this is a, this is like a cla classic um, classroom teacher conversation where, where it becomes very subjective because what is what is exceeding standards mean <laughs> and what is meeting standards and what is working mm -hmm. towards standards this is a conversation that teachers are having all the time because mm -hmm. I'm going to be saying you know mm -hmm. I might it might mean this to me and this is something else to somebody else so to have some type of definition of what those things mean and um, 
helps. And so you usually have like a little rubric to explain th those types of uh, evaluation measures. So, so we would know. So that's where I would think there's some of, some of the professional development would need to occur. So this is um, similar to what's happened. This process is similar to the APPR, which is nice because it kind of aligns with um, other, other people. So that's something for you, for you to review. And I'll go through the contract to get specific what is, what is it specifically um, that we have to have in there. And I'll talk to with um, maybe, um, Glenn, you could talk to Ben's firm to see what, are, what do we have to do as an interim and what, or what do you want to do. And that's what I have for, for tonight. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Um, I entertain a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. Okay. Our first action item is to approve the uh, attached agreement between Ron Finch, who is our internal auditor, and Lansing Schools for internal audit risk assessment for the year 2013-14. How much are we spending on that? Uh, um, I'll tell you off the top of my head. I'm going mean, to say it's around six thousand dollars. I don't know if I saw it in the in the actual. Yeah, agreement. I think it's around six thousand, maybe sixty-six hundred. Okay. Or six thousand. Money and very well spent. It is very well spent, very and well spent. and you're not obligated any longer under the law. To have the internal audit because we're a small school, but I, I hope money that very keep it well uh, spent. It's, it's, it's a great uh, service for he, me to he does find efficiencies. Yeah. No, he he just really does a nice job. He basically maintains a standard for the board, I think, and right. helps you. Uh, it gives you a lever on on staff and yeah. everybody else in the school system to follow policy. I, and I, he's I, a check. I think exactly. as much as, as uh, a check is, he's just. I think he really gives good feedback and guidance. Of, and I think you and your whole department are very open to, hey, tell us how we can do things better. And yeah. he's, he does a really nice job at that. Yeah, it's very informative. Yeah. Very informative. Okay, so uh, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, the, um, or we already we did. It. We did. We did. We did. Okay, I'm sorry. My last meeting, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to lose it. I'm, I'm getting old. Okay, so uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? They abstain. Okay, so we've approved the uh, contract for uh, Mr. Finch. Uh, approved the following resolution, okay, with, with in, in, in uh, relationship to the building project change orders for uh, the BCP. Resolved that the Lansing School District of Education authorizes the superintendent to approve building projects change orders for the building core project up to a limit of fifteen thousand dollars. Second. Okay. All in favor discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. Okay, approve uh, the attached phase two net zero project to Secor uh, attached and the contract uh, first and then the contract for uh, CNS technical resources. Did I miss Oh, no, you got no, it. I, no, no, I don't no. think I don't think I did, but anyway. okay. I'm old, but the eyes are still good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> okay. We. I would uh, entertain a motion. Like, can we approve both of those uh, together, or do you? We want to separate them. So let's approve both of them together. Okay. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I just have a question kind of yes. regarding net zero, you know, thinking about what's happening with the proposed sewer and what's happening with our, our sewer system. How do things get on net zero projects for us? Like if we're looking at um, dual flush toilets or low water use toilets or we're looking at aerators in our showers or in our faucets to, number one, reduce the amount of you know, potential water that we use. Number two, looking at environmental issues there and of course then not stressing our sewer as much 
when we're trying to piece things together? How do things like that get on or get addressed? Um, so the Net Zero program is a program that CNS uh, company actually kind of created, their, engin one, their engineering group. And um, uh, they come in and they, they look around our facilities. We sort of point them in certain directions. Okay. So for instance, these rooftop unit things that we have them kind of focusing on now are things that uh, um, are costing us enough money and are near the end of their life, their useful life according to the building condition survey. Um, so we sort of point them in general directions, but say, you know, just go find a way that we can have a net impact of a zero cost to the, to the voters and a long-term uh, savings. Okay. Um, so that's really it. Okay, I just didn't know if some of those things might be brought up as a possible issue yeah. regarding Yeah, absolutely, what's and happening. that's something also that's great. I hadn't thought of the, like the zero flush and some of that, and I will point them in that direction, um, but I'll also point Chris Espirito our energy management um, coordinator service from the TST because uh, right now I've had her doing a, an evaluation, she and Jim's been helping her, but doing an evaluation of our cafeteria equipment. Okay. Uh, and we are finding that there's a number of pieces of equipment that uh, with replacement we could have some long-term savings. savings. Um, some of those it makes sense to wait because there's gonna be so much involved in replacing them, it, it makes sense to wait for another capital project mm -hmm. and fit them in there and capture the aid as well. Same thing might be um, here, I just thought it was but appropriate to bring it up. Sorry, yeah, it's kind of That's great, I appreciate target, that, thank you. Okay, thanks. Those conversations often happen at the facilities meetings, right? Okay. Call the vote then. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. All right. So we have some uh, math books that are no longer uh, being used because of the Common Core. Okay. So we have a resolution here that the Lansing Central School uh, Board of Education deems the attached list of math books outdated and approves disposal of the same. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? Does anybody know where they actually go? Yeah, that's a question. D or, or does the Rotary Books of the World, do they just decide? Mm -hmm. Do they decide where they go or? Um, go someplace without the common core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they're not going to New York. That's very They go to Texas. Well, they could be good resources and homeless. Right? Yeah, no, that's uh, true. Um, in the best case scenario, if they're not too old, sometimes we've been able to um, sell them actually back to secondary um, book purchasers, if you will. Um, I think these are so old from what I remember, um, the paper when I signed it, that I don't think that would be a possibility. We can, of course, take them down to the used book um, area, uh, storage area down in, in Ithaca for the, for the book sale. There, we could offer them to um, private schools, perhaps, in the area. But um, we're, we're in the spot now where, just so you know, we're, we're not going to be using, in fact, I don't think anyone in New York State is going to be using textbooks or purchasing them. Very few people are going to be purchasing them until the state is completely settled in what is being taught and what grade level. Uh, we're depending right now on publications from the state um, to use rather than, uh, rather than textbooks. So. Um, it's a scramble, really, trying to figure out what we're going to be using. But these are not, the ones we're talking about um, disposing of are not anywhere near acceptable. So I, I, would, I would urge us not to just throw them away, to just throw them into a dumpster. But I, think, I think there was a, they were going to some organization. Right, it says donate to Books yeah. for the World, which is the Rotary Books yeah. for the which World. Which is what the, what the high school what um, student council, I think, is running. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good that would be a good option. Since these were bought in 2002 and 2006, and they're completely useless now, yeah. um, I graduated in 1992, which means that everything I learned about math is probably useless too. Yeah. I would think. You know, it's not. It's the same. It's the same concepts. It's the yeah. sequence <laughs> that you're being taught because right. the, because of when they test you. So it's about, w it's really it comes down to when. So now we're saying, you know, we really don't need a textbook. We really just need to know the core curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then we have edu excellent educators that can, d can um, make their own uh, scope and sequence. So for example, and sorry, the, the common core in sixth grade may say that there's an introduction to algebra. And you won't find that in that textbook. So you're stuck with, you know, 
trying to trade textbooks back and forth at different times, it, it's just, it's impossible to do, really. What so. typically was a sixth grade textbook now might be taught in fifth grade, and it's, so it's, it's really just shifting things around and asking more, um, well, the Common Core is now asking more critical thinking questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, entertain a motion to uh, approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. Okay, and uh, the last one is for us to approve the attached Phase B award letter for contractor regarding the 2013 BCR capital mm -hmm. project. So we'll move. Second. Any discussion? Okay, so I uh, would entertain uh, then a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. I uh, entertain a motion I, I to. Can I make a second before you adjourn? Sure. Um, I guess this is on. Um, Chris made the announcement that you're leaving after community input. So I just want to take this time to say that I'd like to thank you for your six years on the board. Um, we don't always agree, especially politically, but what I found is that when I talk to you, when anybody talks to you, you really listen. You don't just listen, but you consider what they say. I know many times they've actually changed your opinion after listening to what people have to say, which is sort of unusual. Um, the other aspect is that I think it's the nature of people when they get on the board, they get on the board because they're interested in education and children, and they tend to think that expense is no issue. Uh, you are different in that way. You've always been very fiscally conservative and make sure that uh, the school district doesn't get out of hand and you sort of put the district to the test as far as economic issues go. And I've always felt very good that there was at least one person on the board that was fiscally conservative and looking out for the taxpayer because I think it's just generally the nature of people on the board that you don't. So I will miss you in that sense and I don't think there will be anybody else out here really right now that will be replacing you. But I do you know, appreciate what you've done and thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you, Ted. Okay, entertain a motion to adjourn. I got eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can dance. <laughs> 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 <laughs>